the carnal man is actually a believer he's one who is saved already but something is still wrong with that person the administration of eternal life in the experience has not been furnished in such a man please listen carefully a carnal man is not necessarily an unbeliever he's one who has answered the altar call truly from a spirit standpoint he has received the life of jesus are we together but the outworkings of that life has not found expression in his life and there are a few things that characterize the life of a carnal man number one is the absence of transformation by the word the first way you know a carnal man is the absence of transformation by the word of god don't forget this the absence of transformation by the word of god he has not sustained what the bible calls the mind of christ he is not spiritually minded the carnal man has a mindset in fact what principally defines carnality is mindset romans 8 6 to be carnally minded we read that earlier on is death to be carnally minded a carnal person is one who has a carnal mindset but to be spiritually minded is life and peace such a person is still alive to self and the desires of the flesh write that down such a person is still alive to self i have taught you that there are two things that you deal with as you sojourn this path of faith number one is a sin problem number two is a flesh problem for the sin problem you deal with it the moment you receive the life of god you are declared righteous you receive an imputation of the righteousness of god in christ and that nature of sin completely dies and is out of your life but as a believer there is still something else to deal with it is called the flesh and for that one you don't cast it out with one salvation prayer the sin problem is done but the problem of the flesh can live with you all the days of your life, even as a Christian. Paul says, as, as touching the matters of the flesh, he says, I die daily. I die daily. Two, he says, I put my flesh under subjection. There is an active participation on my own part to keep my flesh at bay. Many believers do not understand this. And once people are born again, they just believe that because the sin problem is solved, it means I'm all right. No. Listen to what Paul said. Paul the apostle, when you read Romans chapter 8, verse, I mean chapter 7, Paul began to vent out his own frustration. He says, listen, there are two laws that are working in my members. Are we together? One is the law of sin and death. The other is the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. So that the things I do not want to do, this is Paul speaking, I find myself doing them. The things that I want to do, I do not find myself doing them. He was frustrated and he said, Oh wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? Paul was frustrated. This was not a statement of encouragement. Oh wretched man that I am. Why is it that I find myself, it's like another software that has possessed me, controlling me to do the things that I do not want to do. And the things that I want to do, I don't find myself doing it. And he said, who shall deliver me, even though saved from this body of death? Say the carnal man. I submit to you by the authority of scripture that a large percentage of believers are still domiciled in this realm unfortunately for many hopelessly so because the education the enlightenment the mentorship the system of transition that graduates you to become spiritual in experience most people may never have access to it so you can be saved for 30 years and only transit from a natural man to become a carnal man and remain there and keep questioning your spiritual life keep questioning your salvation because after 10 15 years you cannot see the value of growth nothing in your life justifies knowing god loving god serving god living for god you look at your life and you look at unbelievers and everything is the same the carnal man he still speaks like he used to speak 
He still acts like he used to act. Are we together? Your impulses are fleshly, sensual. That many times people have to remind you and say, are you not a man of God? Are you not a pastor? Are you not a, a, a member of so, so, and so? You say, ah, don't mind me. These are the kind of people that one day will say, listen, let me tell you, don't think because I'm saved, I will remove my clothes here and beat the living daylight out of you. Have you heard people speak like that? And then others who say, this is my church mind. This is my what? That means there is another one. And they are right. Truly, there is another one. What is the danger of carnality? I will tell you. The danger of carnality is that your life becomes a consistent misrepresentation of the image of Christ. Your life becomes a consistent misrepresentation of the image of Christ because you are carrying a title that cannot be defended by your life. You are carrying the title believer, the title Christian, but it cannot be defended. So your life, if people are going to learn God through the lens of your life, you become a consistent misrepresentation. Are we learning? Number two, what is the consequence of being and remaining carnal? Your experience in times of results and that of the unbeliever will not be different. Your experience in terms of your journey, your possibilities and your limitations will be almost exactly the same. The profit of your being saved cannot be demonstrated in your life as a carnal believer. This is a very serious thing for many people. This is the explanation behind the frustration of many Christians. I'm saved now. Why is my life still like this? I will tell you why. Because you have not allowed the Spirit of God to transit you. The potential of this life we have received is only seen clearest when it is viewed through the lens of spiritual people. To be carnally minded. And the Bible lets us know that one who is carnal is still a baby. Are we together? Let me show you a scripture. I hope God is speaking to someone. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 1 to 4. 1 Corinthians 3, 1 to 4. And I, brethren, please write and let me have your attention. I could not speak to you as unto spiritual. My God. That means Paul is teaching us up front that there is a way you speak to spiritual people. And there is a way you speak to carnal people. Are you seeing that now? Yes. It's the reason why there are many believers who cannot understand many things that are taught. Because they are still carnally minded. And even though they may laugh and carry all the gestures of knowledge and assimilation, the truth is they are not understanding what is being said. Because there are certain discussions that you really have to be spiritual to understand. Back to the discussion. And I, brethren, I could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal. Now watch carefully. Even as up to babes, help me, the last two words, in Christ. One more time. There is such description of a believer as a babe in Christ. You are a child, even though you are in Christ. He's not speaking to people who are outside Christ. They are in Christ, but he's saying you are still children. Verse 2, I have fed you with milk like a mother feeds a baby. Milk here is talking about elementary levels of spiritual knowledge and not with meat. For hitherto ye were not able to bear them. Neither ye now are able. Paul is expressing his frustration. He's saying, I've come here many times and there are weightier things to teach you in the spirit. But every time I meet you and I examine you, that means there is a system for examining the state of a believer. You can know that this believer is still a child. Paul is saying, this is a lesson for men of God. When you go to minister to people, gauge, try to gauge the, the spiritual state of the people so you don't waste your time discussing things that will fall on deaf ears. Give us that scripture. 
I was not able to teach you. I just had to feed you with milk and not meat. For hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither can you bear it now. What is the proof of carnality? Verse 4. Now. Okay, well, let's go to verse 3. Verse 3. It says, For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you, now see all the elements of the flesh. He's talking to Christians. Envyings and strife and divisions. Are you not carnal and walk as men? He's dealing with the issue of carnal Christians now. If you look at verse 4, to end this, this scripture, it says, For while one said, I am for Paul, another, I am for Apollos, it means that you are still at the realm of men. Your mindset, you are not yet kingdom minded, you are not heavenly minded, you are still men pleasers. These are still elements of the flesh finding expression in you. Are you seeing that now? There are things I want to teach you, he's saying, but I cannot because I found out that in teaching you, I will waste my time. Even Jesus himself wanted to teach the disciples certain weightier matters of the kingdom. But he said unto them, I hope you know none of the disciples were saved. No, they were not saved. They were only being prepared. <laughs> How could they be saved without the Holy Spirit? Are we together now? Just because they were around Jesus did not make them saved. No. If they were saved by what means? It then means we have to cancel salvation. There is no other name under heaven given unto men by which we must be saved. And salvation is only by the blood, the substitutionary sacrifice. So how could they have been saved? No. Everybody Jesus healed was still unsaved, including the religious people. Are we together? He had to die and become the firstborn of we the begotten. So he told them, he said, I have many things to tell you, but ye cannot bear them now. Ye cannot bear them. Not need, ye cannot hear them. Ye cannot bear them. And I've taught you here that some of those things he wanted to say was what the Spirit inspired Paul to write. You know how hard some of Paul's writings are? That even the disciples said, Kai, this one, ah, this man, this thing is hard, small. Low. So imagine if Jesus were talking to them. They would be saying, preach, preacher. And at the end of it, they would say, let's go out fishing. This guy is talking nonsense and wasting our time here. One of the ways you know you are still carnal is that you don't have the endurance for sound doctrine. The moment sound doctrine is a burden, something in you says, what is all this one now? Can't you just go straight forward? Receive. I'm not being sarcastic, but it's true. If I shout now and say, what am I seeing? BMW. <laughs> Koinonia, BMW. Hey! Someone already lifted his hand and carried the hand of somebody and said that. Now, I'm not saying that you receive it. Receive your BMW. <laughs> Are we together? But you see, if the entire journey of the believer is only centered around these kinds of things, there will be a lot of problems. And I tell you the truth, respectfully speaking, that we men of God have been given the mandate by God to transition people from being natural, carnal, to being spiritual. For as long as we keep maintaining carnal membership, the pastor will never rest. One of the proof of carnality is putting your attention on a man and not God. It's the reason why people keep going through all kinds of problems, even in ministry. Because if I tie all your attention to me, I will be in trouble. It means I will never sleep for the rest of my life. Are we together? So my job is to help you. And the greatest way to help you is not just to prophesy to you. The greatest way to help you is not just to pray for you when you are sick or be there for you when you have problems. That is very important. It's a very important pastoral duty, but let me tell you, the greatest way to really help believers is to teach them. Bring light, bring understanding, bring illumination. Grant them access to wisdom. The moment believers start growing and maturing, you start resting as a man of God. The same way when a parent invests in a child, are we together? As the child starts growing and is becoming a responsible child, the parent will start resting. There are parents who have children taller than them and yet they will not rest. You know why? Because the child, with all due respect, is ill-trained 
and still a burden to the parent. At 40, still a burden. At 50, still a burden. So where the parents would rest, they are not resting because they move from one police station after the other going to bail that child out. This is how it can be. This is not a pastor's conference, but I, I'm just digressing to help you. If you're a man of God here, let me tell you the truth. Don't feel so insecure that you have to turn the attention of everybody on you. It is a risk. You will never be able to find sleep. Help them and guide them and lead them to Jesus. Teach them truth. You are there to supervise, to guide, to coordinate. Are we together? Many believers are still carnal. Carnal because of our thinking. Carnal because we are still alive to self. The fleshly desires we are carnal because we are largely unyielded to God, unyielded to the Holy Spirit. I'm pressing on this carnality so that we'll be able to understand true spirituality. So the natural man is the un unregenerate man He's not even met Christ at all. Even if he's been around the things of God, he does not have to be a bad man by our definition of being bad, doing anything wrong, society wrong, societally wrong. But the fact that that man is not saved, something is wrong. Eternal damnation is the destiny of that man without Christ. For the carnal man, he's saved. But that the reality, he's, he cannot be a true reflection of Christ. Are we together? The Bible says to be carnally minded is death. So you watch a carnal man dying as if he is not spirit, as if he's not saved. And you are wondering, were you really saved? Everything you used to do before you were saved, you are still doing now. No difference. No difference whatsoever. Same talk, same behavior, same places, same relationships, same things. That is a carnally minded man. Same philosophies, same insults, same anger, same manifestations of the flesh. There is nothing around your life. If someone did not see you making an altar call and someone comes to meet you one year even after you are saved, they would know the difference. You will have to tell them, well, um, just to let you know I'm saved now. And they say you are saved? It's a joke. But it's supposed to be clear. The reality of salvation is supposed to have a growing influence within you. Is God speaking to someone tonight? Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 1 to 3. Ephesians 2, 1 to 3. It says, and you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and in sins. Uh-huh. Verse 2. It says, wherein, he's describing something now. Wherein in time past, ye walked according to the cause of this world. Watch this. According to the prince of the power of the air. The spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience. Are you seeing that there are, there are people in this life you see, the things that they do is not counseling that will change it. They need an altar call. Are we together? It doesn't matter what kind of counseling, with all due respect, you can administer superior therapies. It will not change because there is a spirit that works in the sons of disobedience. I've seen people who you counsel and at the point of counseling, they are even crying. And you say, will you do this again? They say, me, no, not at all. In fact, I can tell you today is the last day. That person will get up right where you are and walk right, have you seen that kind of thing? Right there. You can bail the person out of a police station and they'll say, if you return here again, you will not go back. Yes, sir. By the next week, the person is back there. There is a spirit Please hear me. This is spiritual intelligence. Once you see people doing certain things that they cannot stop, stop wasting your time with counseling. You need to administer another kind of therapy. It's called the power of God. Are we together? Yeah. The person stole 10 naira. You caught the person red-handed with 10 naira there. And the person said, this is the last time. If I do another stealing, may God kill me. God doesn't kill because he knows the man is just talking nonsense. By evening, not the next day. Evening. 
he just sits and you know these spirits work these spirits actually create a prophetic expression in their victims because you can hide something and the person just stands in the room and just goes to lift the mat the same way you prophesy you hide the money hide it anywhere they will find it the same way somebody for instance not to condemn all these guys that smoke all kinds of things as soon as they enter a city a city they have never gone to in two hours they know where their company is it's a spirit i know you are laughing but listen carefully to what i'm telling you there is a spirit that works in people the same way there is a spirit that brings trouble negative things to people Now, but that is supposed to be the experience of the unbeliever. But you can be a believer. <laughs> Listen, to believe that just because you are saved, demon spirits cannot have access to your mind and your destiny is a joke. Did you hear what I said? Let me repeat it for your learning. It is a joke. They should not. But since you are carnal, there is no difference. So you find out that when you are ministering deliverance, you will see both believers and non-believers under the influence of these spirits. The explanation is provided you still have a carnal software, there is still a gate for Satan to access your life. He may not possess you because the life of God is in your spirit, but he can still find room to manipulate your life even as though you were possessed. So there are many believers moving around and saying it doesn't matter now that I'm saved, I don't need, it's not true. It's not true. Listen to my message, complete deliverance. I teach there that there are three levels of deliverance. There is the deliverance where by the power of God, you cast out the spirit influence. Ideally, that should be to an unbeliever. But number two, there is deliverance through transformation. This is what makes deliverance not needed in your life again. That when you sit down and you are transformed, what part of you is being transformed? Your mind. There is a switch from being carnally minded to being spiritually minded. And now you can partner as an act of your will with the word of God and with the Holy Spirit. And when Satan comes to you because he will come, there is nothing in you that can connect him to you again. But until then, he would deceive you into believing that you cannot be manipulated by spirits. And yet you will find your life, even though you are saved, you will still find your life helplessly under the influence of spirits. Helplessly. Helplessly under the influence of spirits. And it does not matter whether you are a preacher. It does not matter whether you are a businessman. It does not matter whether you are an elder in church. Spirits don't have respect for those things. Once you are carnally minded, you are in the realm of Satan. There is a way that carnal people walk. He says, who walk according to the cause of this world. There is a way carnally minded people speak. There is a way carnally minded people behave. Ladies and gentlemen, listen. Just because you have obtained grace from God does not mean you will utilize it. You can waste the grace, the enabling grace that was given. It is why every time Jesus saw people and he had compassion towards them, the first thing he did was to teach them. That means the real way to show people compassion, the real way to show people, to, if you desire to take people out of their state, your response is not just a prophetic word. Your response is not just healing. Your real response to dealing with people's state is to teach them. The teaching ministry is the permanent cure for people's state. But then, related to the teaching ministry, the content, the spiritual information that you are communicating must be wholesome, doctrinal, balanced, seasoned with power. To produce the effect. Otherwise, you'll be creating another kind of error again. Which is what is happening sadly across the body of Christ. So we have many teachers. But the content is where the problem is. So there are believers who are learning and receiving. But the problem is not their refusal to receive. Is that there is something wrong with the kind of information. Either it is imbalanced or completely wrong. 
Are we together? What do you do with a carnal mind? What do you do with a carnal person? A carnal person needs beyond counseling. Please let me have your attention. A carnal man needs beyond advice. A carnal man needs beyond just reading a book. What a carnal man needs is to submit himself. Watch this now. To submit himself to the ministry of the word through a teaching priest. And then that process of transition begins until he becomes a spiritual man. Is someone learning now? So you find yourself and you know as I'm speaking that truly I'm still in this realm of carnality. My mind is not purified. My thoughts are not purified. So says my speaking. So says my behavior. Because your mindset is what controls your behavior. Your mindset is what controls your speaking. Your mindset is what controls your appetites. And the moment you find out that you are not manifesting God-like characteristics, I am telling you, the diagnosis is that you are carnal, even though you are saved. But there is a way out. In the name of Jesus, there is a way out. Thank you for listening to this message. Are you blessed at all by this message? If yes, then smash that like button and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Remember that when this life is over, everyone will give an account to God. Jesus Christ died for me and you so that we can receive the forgiveness of our sins, so as to stand holy and faultless before God. See you in our next video. We love you very much.